All right, so the next section that we need to talk about are some tips for locating and marketing investment properties, depending if you're helping your client buy or you're helping your client sell. Now, I have got a total of four methods up here. There are probably a blue million methods and I can't cover them all because depending on the strategy, if, if it's a fix and flip and the flip portion is going to be to a quote unquote true homeowner, then everything you know as a real estate agent is probably going to be used in marketing that property to another uh, buyer, just like you would do it. I often call this mom and pop real estate, um, meaning traditional real estate's mom and pop. Investor real estate's slightly different as you've been seeing. So if they're a fix and flip, there's going to be marketing techniques that you use in your mom and pop real estate that will play out as well. So there's 50, 60, 70 different marketing tactics. The concept that I'm trying to convey here in these four is virtually that this part of the deal for you is almost the same as you would use in mom and pop real estate. <coughs> So for example, letting your friends know you're looking. The first thing that you need to do is build a source of leads in your social circle. We call this your sphere of influence, just like you did when you were a beginning real estate agent. Now you may have a different social circle, circle or you may be communicating a different message to this social circle. circle. <laughs> You'd think somebody that would talk for a living could actually talk. Because you now want to let people know that you deal with investors and that's your niche and you are the go-to agent for investors and they are the ones that you should call. The good thing about this niche is it does tend to stand out in people's brains because let's face it, if somebody came to me and said, hey, I got my real estate license. You want to buy or sell? Call me. Okay, you and the 3,700 other agents that I know, you can drive a golf ball in any direction right now and bounce it off nine other realtors, all right? But if one of them says, I deal specifically with investors, oh, now wait a minute, that's a slightly different um monologue that I heard now yeah I know five guys that are real estate agents but this one guy told me that he deals with investors and investment properties that could be a, 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 a key factor in why they remember you so yeah we used to tell everybody hey I'm in the business call me if you need now you've got a new message to give out that may be, hey, I'm in the business, but I deal with this specific type of person. Well, I've got five or six investors, two are buy and hold, the others are fix and flip. If you've got a property or you know someone that's got a property that they just don't really want to deal with, can't get rid of, it needs a lot of repair and they're just not up to it, call me because I've got those buyers specifically geared towards that. <clears throat> now, the other thing, and sometimes this flies in the face of what most agents think about, is networking with other agents. Because just like mom and pop, and I keep using finger quotes, and I know you guys can see me, but at home they cannot. Dealing with mom and pop real estate <clears throat> Just lost my entire train of thought right there. Um, dealing with mom and pop, a lot of agents see other agents as competitors. That's not the case. And we could do a whole two hour class on why that shouldn't be because we're cooperating brokers. But 
Here is a case of where you're typically doing something different that maybe that agent doesn't want to do, doesn't understand, hasn't taken this class, doesn't really get it. So it is very possible that you have other agents that are like, yeah, <clears throat> you got a house that you want to sell that needs a ton of rehab. We're not going to be able to put this on the market for mom and pop. But I know an agent that actually does specialize in that and they can refer it to you and remember you can now pay referrals to them. So there are agents out there that like to do the high end stuff and I don't lower myself. Well, now you go to them and go, hey, look, dude, I understand you do the million dollar property sitting up there on the lake. But if you ever have anybody that has a rehab project or a commercial call me, that's what I do, and I'm going to pay you a referral for that, and now you've broadened your horizon to take more clients, and you're going to get paid for something that you're that I'm going to do most of the work on, so call me, all right? Don't forget that the network of other agents is also a pool for you to find properties, to find buyers. Maybe the same scenario, only they've got a client that wants to buy investment property and they don't necessarily know how to do the math or anything like that. They could refer you the client as well. So both the property and the investor, so that would be both the listing side and the selling side, you could have other agents feeding you these deals as well. So make sure that you reach out to some of the top agents and say, hey, I know that you're a big time agent in your market. And because of that, you get a lot of business. Well, instead of throwing some of it away or doing it poorly, contact me. Um, here's a, a technique that I actually have used before is there are people when you drive around that you see rental signs, or you can even go out and look on Craigslist. Now I'm kind of dating myself, but yes, Craigslist is still out there or any of those other sign, uh, websites. Potentially those people are in need of an agent, just like the for sale by owner signs are for your mom and pop. You can call that investor that's got a for rent sign and say, hey, if I bring you a tenant, you're going to pay me or let me list your property for rent. Oh, and by the way, I see you're an investor. What's your strategy? Because I deal with investors. Maybe I can find you some more rental properties uh, that you want to fix and flip. I would remind everybody, please check your local MLS to make sure that property is not already on the MLS. Okay. <clears throat> Shouldn't be if it's a for sale by, or I mean, if it's a for rent sign in the yard without another agent, but don't put yourself in a, in a hook by calling that person and them going, Oh yeah, well, I've already got an agent. I've got it listed with just check the MLS. If it's not in the MLS, dude, you've got a lead. All right. Driving for dollars, basically the same strategy. Drive around and look for properties that don't know they're in trouble yet. Things like tall grasses. One of the techniques I learned, one of the investor told me was that was really pretty cool. Think about this. When it snows, if it snows where you're at, um, drive around and look for the driveways that have no tire tracks or that are not cleaned off. Potentially a sign of a vacant property. All right potentially a sign for a vacant property, overgrown grass, peeling paint, dilapidated, overgrown, broken windows. These are all signs that that's owned by somebody who is maybe an investor or maybe a mom and pop seller that can't sell the property to another mom and pop buyer because of all of the repairs. Well, dude, I've already got investor buyers that love to do fix and flip and your property is ugly enough <laughs> that it fits my buyer's potential. All right. 
So you can actually do that. Now, you can do that as regular mom and pop. That's kind of harder to identify motivated sellers if there's, this one's pretty easy to identify visually what I mean. You can drive down a neighborhood and stand in somebody's front yard and look down the row and go, yeah, I see uh, one yard down there that needs to be mowed that's six inches tall. Let's go down and look at that one. So those, these properties are a little easier to identify visually. They can become targets for your buyers. They can become listings to other investor buyers that you got. You could get the listing and double end it and do both sides if your MLS allows you to do uh, dual agency. If they don't in the state you're in, then take one side or the other and refer one side to your buddy and take a referral fee. You can make it that way. So these are just four tips for locating and marketing investment properties. Like I said, there's probably another 37 million we didn't cover. And most of them, depending on your investor strategies, you could use whatever you do for your mom and pop strategies. Oh, I posted on Facebook and yada, yada, yada. So you've got all of those strategies that can be combined with these as well. All right.